In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and share with you my favorite third-party apps to download that support Apple CarPlay. Let's get started. What's going on everyone? Hope you're all doing fantastic. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the third-party apps that I use day to day on Apple CarPlay and some of which might surprise you because uh, you know, one thing that Apple CarPlay is missing is a seven day weather forecast. Yes, there's no weather app that will actually show you this image on your head unit, but there is this application that you could download. It's free to use. And what basically this allows you to do is hear the current weather condition in your local area. The app is called Weatherology and the app uses your location, which will actually play a little audio clip of the current weather condition. It gets constantly updated, so you're always gonna be automatically updated on the latest weather report, as well as the current temperature. But just like Siri, it's all audio. And overall, it's just really great. So if you're looking for that weather application, this is the only one that currently works with Apple CarPlay and works really well. Next app I wanna go ahead and talk about is News. Now let's be real, 2020 has been wild. So being up to date on the latest news is really important, especially with this whole thing still continuing to spread. And the app that I've been using that's been giving me my quick feeds is NPR One. Now what I like about NPR One over other news applications, it's not only is it fully supported on Apple CarPlay, but I like the fact that their clips are short and sweet. And they give you the full summary right there of everything you have to know about that's currently going on. The clips are literally just a couple of minutes or so, so they're not gonna last throughout the entire commute. And I like the fact that they cover pretty much every single topic on what's currently going on. The UI is really user-friendly. You can navigate and browse through specific articles if you wanna find out more about the subject. And overall, it's just a really great application. So quick news feed, definitely do check out NPR One. Now, Overcast is a application that hosts a lot of popular podcasts. If you listen to a lot of podcasts like I do, I highly recommend checking out this application. It's also free to download. There's no monthly fee or anything required to use it, nor do you actually have to create an account with them. That's right, you don't have to create an account to use this application. You can search for all your favorite podcasts and you can subscribe to it. And once you're subscribed, navigating on the head unit itself is really easy. So you can always find the latest episode of the podcast you're trying to listen to. The music controls is no different compared to Apple Music controls or other streaming platforms. So it's really easy to navigate. And I also like the fact that you could easily subscribe and bookmark some of your favorite podcasts on the native app on your iPhone. So if you're looking for a really good podcast app that doesn't take up a lot of storage like Apple's podcast app, definitely do check out Overcast. Moving along, a cool thing I like about Apple CarPlay is the need of no longer having to actually listen to the radio station with your vehicle's antenna. So you can literally throw away your antenna after I'm gonna go ahead and show you this next app. I'm being sarcastic, by the way. Don't actually do that unless you want to. I don't know, you do you. But this app is called My Tuner Radio. And what I like about this tune-in app is not only can you search for your local radio stations, you can also bookmark it. And when you launch the app on your head unit, you could just select it and begin streaming as long as you have an LTE connection. You are able to listen to your radio station live and unlike your standard traditional radio unit on your vehicle, no matter where you are around the world, you're always gonna be able to stream your local radio station as there's no reception limits and then you have to look for a new station as you're traveling through the state or something. So for the best high definition radio experience, definitely do check out this app. Now, when it comes to navigation, there's nothing wrong with Google Maps, but whenever I'm traveling cross country or going to a place that I'm not familiar with, I'm gonna be using most likely Waze. What I like about Waze is not only does it share the same very similar features like what Apple Maps has or Google Maps, because I still use those two. Heck, sometimes I even run both of them at the same time just to make the two voice assistants argue. Come on, I know I'm not the only one that does that. But very similar to Apple CarPlay and Google Maps, Waze will show you your speed limit, it'll update you with traffic, but since it's community driven, other users can also mark certain things. Like if there's last minute construction, instead of waiting a couple minutes for Apple Maps or Google Maps to update with Waves, these updates are live. It has such a large community that users will automatically begin marking it. And this also includes speed traps. So for our cross country road trips, that's why I prefer using Waze. And yes, it also has the same guidelines when changing lanes, just like the other two navigation maps. But if you wanna step it up a notch when it comes to locating speed traps, you'll be surprised to know that there's an application that will allow you to listen to emergency radio stations. That's right, you could tune in and listen live 
on what the officers are talking about or what event is taking place around your area. So if there's an unexpected slowdown on the highway or something, you see a lot of flashing lights, you can literally launch this scan radio app, look for your location, and tune in on the emergency dispatch radio signal and listen to what's going on. Now for music, this is all personal preference. Of course, Spotify is popular. Apple Music is also popular. But for me personally, I prefer using Google Music for a couple of good reasons. The main reason being just like other streaming platforms, you could download songs offline, create your custom playlists, and listen to it all on your vehicle. Just unlike Spotify or Apple Music, with YouTube Music, if it's an indie artist or a remix that was created by a small creator, if it's uploaded on YouTube, you could download it on the YouTube Music app and listen to it on your car. And then I personally have this plan bundled up with YouTube Premium, so I get a discount, so I, I could download my videos on YouTube offline and view it anywhere, as long as my membership is active. And I could also launch the Music app on my Apple CarPlay and shuffle through many different songs as well as new albums that just recently dropped. Again, for music streaming, this is all personal preference, but the next one I will recommend to check out is by Spotify, but it's a separate app. It's called Spotify Stations. If you ever use Pandora or other similar station apps where based from the song or the artist that you enjoy listening to, it's gonna automatically create a station. Now, Apple Music has something like this very similar, but it requires you to have an Apple Music membership account. With Spotify, you don't have to. You don't even have to be a premium member to have access to this other app. I really do like using this app because I'm always finding new songs, discovering new artists, and sometimes would just give me a song that I totally forgot existed that I heard a while ago. I don't know how Spotify does it, but their algorithm, their bots, always do a fantastic job in recommending the next song. So if you're bored and you don't know what to listen to, go ahead and download this app and give it a shot. As once again, there's no membership needed to use it. So you're good with just a free Spotify account. Now for big brain stuff, if you're into sci-fi, science, historical events, just learning new things or just enjoying a good book once a while, maybe relive some childhood favorite, then go ahead and check out Audible. It's really enjoyable, especially when you're stuck in traffic and you have nothing to do. And obviously you really can't like take out a book and begin reading while behind a wheel. But with audiobook, their voice narrated books, their services is really fantastic because this allows you to actually listen to your favorite book while you're commuting. And let's be real, there's times where we're stuck in traffic for several minutes or maybe one or two hours. Audiobooks really does come in handy, especially if there's a book that you know you won't have time to read or catch up when you're finally at home. This gives you the opportunity to listen to new books or or listen to some like childhood classics like Harry Potter and such. And no, they did not sponsor this video. This is just me recommending it to you guys because it's something that I personally find myself using and I'm sure others will definitely enjoy. However, I do have this exclusive link in case you're curious and you wanna give this platform a try, you'll get a 30 day free trial and three audiobooks to choose from. So if you'd like to give Audible a try, Go ahead and use that link. And if you cancel early, not only will you keep those three titles, but you can also trade it afterwards for another book. But yeah, it's a service I personally use and it's awesome that it's supported on Apple CarPlay and navigating on the display is really easy as well. Now, lastly, if you're big into sports, football, soccer, baseball, anything, I know NBA and such, you can go ahead and check out these apps that I have right here. Those will basically all allow you to stream your favorite sport live while you're driving or possibly listen to replays if you want, as well as interviews. But besides that, those are my favorite third-party apps that support Apple CarPlay to definitely check out. I'll be sure to have links to each of these apps in the video description down below, so they're literally a click away. And if you're wondering how you can rearrange your Apple CarPlay, I might as well show you this trick. Apple actually allows you to reorganize these. If you're not familiar how to reorganize your apps for Apple CarPlay, it's really easy. Real quick, just go into your phone, go on settings, go into general, go to CarPlay, select your vehicle's name, and on top here, click on customize. You can literally click and drag and reorganize your favorite apps, your most used apps, move them to the front page. So next time when you plug in your phone to your vehicle, all your apps are nicely organized. Now, I personally don't understand why Apple made it so complicated to get to this because it's really well hidden in settings, but now you know. This works the same on iOS 13. 
and iOS 14. Speaking of iOS 14, you might have noticed that I am using iOS 14. I'm on the beta currently, and all these apps that I recently featured are all fully supported. They haven't gave me any issues whatsoever. So if you're also on the beta, there's no concern here about li having limitations and such. Now, if you're wondering why I was showing a battery icon on my Apple CarPlay menu, well, that's because I modded my vehicle to have wireless Apple CarPlay. If you want to find out more on how I was able to do that, I got basically covered everything you need to know about in this video over here. Let's go ahead and watch that to find out more. And then this video over here, that's just a video that YouTube is suggesting specifically for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.